Hi guys, if it's Friday and it's raining, this is Down in Dirty Woodscraft. Stay with me. Okay guys, today we're going to talk about an experience I just had that I want to share with you. Okay. Yesterday I was doing uh, some product testing where I was setting up a tarp and a uh, mosquito net that goes around the tarp to make a large protected area. Okay. And I'd gone down to a place I've been to many times, and I went and set up the tarp, and I'm going around hooking up and pulling out the guidelines and everything. This was very early because now here in my south, it's extremely hot during the day right now, and it's been raining a lot in the afternoon, like you see, you can hear, probably hear now on the camera, it's raining right now. So you got to get up early, early to get out there. So I was out there like 6.30 in the morning, you know, quarter after six. I'm setting this up, and I'm doing my bit. And I've got the mosquito net set up, and I'm making a final adjustment up here, and I happen to look down. Something caught my attention. And right about belly level on me, there were 50 yellow jackets on the inside of the net trying to get to me. I was able to get out of there and not get stung. But now, I want to share with you the proper way to deal with this, or at least my way, there's always many ways, but let me share how I dealt with it so maybe it'll help you down the line. Now let's talk about what is a yellow jacket, and I will show you a picture of one right here. They're small, about, I would say not quite the, the length of a bumblebee in body length, but much smaller in diameter, but there's lots of them. And their form of defense is to attack in mass. So you don't hear about getting stung by one, you hear about getting stuck by 20 or 30. So, let's look at how they nest, okay? And why I was able to stumble up on this and not see it. One, time of day. It's been raining in the afternoons, like I said, and it rained that night till after midnight, and then it quit. These insects are a ground dweller. And right here I've set up a rough little of my famous designs to give you an idea. This is ground level, bushes or something, trees or something. And then right in the middle there'll be a little opening. I mean, not much bigger than a number two pencil opening going down the ground and you'll have a large nest under the ground. The only clue you'll have is that right around that opening will be three, four, five of those little bees sitting there hovering. They're cooling. See, they sit there and they hover with their wings. And that pushes air down the hole. And then further down the hole there'll be others. And that's a way of them air circulating within it. But if you disturb them, you're walking along and you step right there or crunch right there or throw something right there, they will boil out. And that nest right there could be bigger than a, a beach ball. I have seen them later on dug up after they'd been exterminated and have fully three foot across inside of one of those nests down there. They dig out the chambers and they'll actually excavate or take over what had been an ant mound and that's been abandoned and turn it into one of theirs. They're normally found in dead rotten logs or in the ground, okay? Now, the minute I looked down and saw that, what is happening? It's because during the night they go back into the ground. It had been raining, so they were staying down there. I would got out there right after dawn. And I'm sitting up and they haven't quote quote woke up and come out. Of course they're awake in there, but they're not reacting to the outside environment because it's not daytime yet. They've got scouts looking up the hole. Remember it's been raining kind of hard. So there's probably some water inclusion or whatever, and I'm betting that the scouts weren't in position. They're probably still down in the mound. So when I walked up, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. And I go to setting up this tarp between these two trees. And I had got the tarp up, I had put the mosquito net up, and it's acting like a pin. As I had pulled it up and I'm making the final adjustments, they had emerged, not in a swarm, but probably their scouts had come out and realized, hey, wait a minute, what's this? And they had started coming out. See, and so when I looked down, they hadn't made any noise till then. I just 
you became aware of the buzz and I looked down and like this far off of my chest right here is like 50 of them on that mosquito net. Had they landed on me, they lit me up instantly. That's their operating procedure. So when you're in the field, keep an eye out for several little bitty bees or little yellow jackets concentrating around a certain area. There'll normally be a holding pattern four to six feet across of patrols going out. So if you're walking along and you happen to see a group of bees buzzing over, one, maybe two, that's nothing. But three or four, that may be a nest. You may be coming close to a nest. Now they're not like you see the old horror movies of the African uh, killer bee. I have walked right by a nest and not got stung before because I stepped and just kept going. They, in their mindset, realize animals are going to stop and go by, you know. But they attack if they think they're being threatened, like a bear or something might dig into the nest or an insect eater or something like that. So standing by the nest, lingering by the nest, whatever, would attract their ire. Me setting up that, and I'm nailing tent stakes in the ground to hold the tarp up. That's probably what woke them up. But they didn't boil out and instantly attack me. They came out. And that's one of their operating procedures. They will come out, and then they will, in a mass, identify the target, and they will come to it. And they could see me through that net, and they came, but they stopped at that net. Had I not had that net with my arms up, if I had been just setting up a tarp, that landed all over my chest and all stung me simultaneously. It had been a bad day for Blackie. I'm not allergic to him, but it had been a bad day for Blackie. So, what you need to understand, and this is something you need to be aware of in your woods, is keep your eyes out for these type of things. This is sort of a landmine in the southern woods. I don't know how far north these are. Okay, You may not have yellow jackets, but you may have other ground dwelling hornets bees whatever or some other thing in your neck of the woods remember over a year ago i did a video where i was talking about what we call chuck holes it's holes hidden in pine straw and everything that you step into and break a leg or whatever you have to be very aware of your environment and even though all my experience everything when i'd come up in the daylight went to setting up i didn't see them they were in the ground and so what did I do? I realized what that was. I didn't run. I gently just backed away and got out of the zone, say 20, 30 feet out. I left my tarp and left the thing. I let them have it. Now, remember they're ground dwellers. So if you've got some piece of kit or gear right here and suddenly, you know, leave it, come back after dark. I went back at about 11 o'clock at night. They were all back in the ground. I gently just pulled the stakes out took my tarp down, got all of it, got out of the way. Didn't get stung. But I know of farm farmers and family members and things that have had run-ins, especially riding riding lawn mowers, because they didn't know there's a, that there's a nest there. And they go riding it over with the lawnmower and suddenly they eat them up. You know, um, if you're attacked, this will not be a mere stinging, you're attacked multiples will start hitting you. You've got to get out of their zone. Now, how far away do you got to get? Usually they will quit chasing you about 100 yards or less. If you have a choice between running through a wide open clear dirt road or say a bunch of bushes and leaves, go through the bushes and leaves. Because as, and as you do, push things away from you so them limbs flip back. It will help dissuade them. Now you're not going to stop them instantly. But they're going to hit you and keep hitting you until you get outside of what they're, they're going to spank you till you get out of range. Okay? And by pushing them limbs as you're running and then flying backwards, you force them to create and you may shorten the attack. Okay? If you get beyond 40, 50 yards, usually it's over. The longest I'm aware of is 100 yards. And that was a family member that was kind of big and kind of heavy and just couldn't run very fast. And they're basically a fast walk and they just kept hitting them, you know. So, when you realize, uh-oh, yellow jackets, get out of zone. You try and slap them at them. If you're standing there, they're just going to keep eating you up. 
They are professional at doubling back and attacking you from other angles. You will never, you, for every one you kill, ten's going to sting you. It's better to just get out of the zone. This isn't something you should be terrified of, although I'm sure some of you are just like, Ugh! and I understand. I have friends that are deeply allergic, and so they have to carry EpiPens with them in case they ever come up on something like this. It's bad enough to, oh, wasp or hornet got me. But down here, the big boogeyman is that you're going to set up a yellow jacket nest. It's never been here, don't know nothing. In my daily travels, I have been to this place 50 times in the last six, eight months. Never saw a yellow jacket there. But on that place that time that morning, there was. And now I know where that nest is. So I have to be respectful of it. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button before you go. And do me a favor. Get out in the woods and enjoy life a little bit. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.